Hello there and welcome. In the previous episode we finished working on our throwables and in this episode we're finally going to start adding enemies into our game. So these enemies will be able to inflict damage, we are going to be able to shoot at them, kill them and of course they will be able to move around and this will add some purpose into our game instead of just shooting at idle objects. Before we start I want to show you the things that I added into the scene so the shooting range remains the same but I also added this outer area with these containers, some kind of military looking space and we're going to use it for our enemies to shoot at them because there is no room inside the shooting range. You can find all of these assets in the description, they're for free and you can use them if you want to. Now we can see that there is a problem with the weapons showing through the wall. And this happens because we place them on the weapon render layer when we wanted them not to clip through the walls. So they will always be rendered, doesn't matter if there is something in front of them. So we want to fix this. We want them to only be on the weapon render layer when we are actually holding them, but not when they are a part of the environment. So inside the weapon script, we're going to scroll down to the update method over here when we check if the weapon is active and the weapon is active when we hold it in our hand. We want to add this code so only if the weapon is active it's going to be on this weapon render layer. Then we're going to copy this and we're going to scroll down to the end of this if statement and over here we're going to paste this again so if the weapon is not active and this can happen if the weapon is just laying on the floor or inside of the environment then we're going to set it to be the default layer. And now back in Unity we should go to all of our weapons and I have them inside objects and weapons and ammunition and over here we have the different weapons so right now all these weapons have the weapon render layer so we're going to change them to be default and of course we also want the children to be default and we're going to do it for all the weapons and also make sure that the prefabs themselves are on this layer and now when we start the game and we go over here we are not going to see these weapons but if we pick up a weapon and then we try to clip, we're going to see that it's not clipping, so it means that it is on the weapon render layer and everything is working, but it will not appear behind objects. So now we're going to start working on our enemies. First of all, we're going to create a simple cylinder and we're going to name it enemy and we're going to position it on the ground. Now we want to add a nav mesh agent component on our enemy because we want to be able to control it, we want it to patrol, we want it to chase our player, then we also want to add this navigation panel. If you don't see it you simply go to window, AI and you have this navigation window, it will open up over here. Now in order to see that the enemy is actually walking we need to make our scene into a static navigation. So we're going to select our environment which will be the ground and then we're simply going to set it to be navigation static and this will let Unity know that the enemy can walk around on this area. Now we will go to bake and we're going to start baking and you're going to see that all of this area will become walkable. Now if you don't see anything changes then you need to enable the gizmos and now you're going to see this blue area and it means that the enemy will walk around on this area. Now if we don't want him to walk over these obstacles we need to make them unwalkable and in order to make them unwalkable we simply need to select them and also these barrels over here and then we need to make them navigation static as well. If this doesn't appear you can simply go to the inspector and over here select navigation static and then say yes change children. Then you go back to navigation and we're going to make them not walkable. Now we're going to bake again and you can see that there is this gap between the containers and this blue area. It means that when our nav agent will go over here 
it will not be able to pass through. And of course you can play around with these gaps by changing the different settings. Now let's do the same thing for the rest of the objects. And of course, if you have a prefab of an item, you don't need to do it every time. You just set the prefab to be static and then it will just stay this way. Now, in order to test if this enemy can walk on this blue area, we're going to create a simple script that will allow us to click anywhere we want. And then this enemy will walk to this point. So we're going to create a new script and we're going to name it click to move. Inside the script, we're going to have a reference to the agent. And also when we click on the left mouse button, it's going to send a ray to the spot. And then it's going to set the destination of the agent to move to this spot. So when we click anywhere on the nav mesh, it's going to move the agent to that spot. Now we're going to take this script and drag it on our enemy. And now if I walk around and I click anywhere on this area, our enemy is going to move to that spot. Now I don't remember if I told you this before, but we're actually going to have a zombie as an enemy. So you can create some kind of soldier that is going to move around and shoot at you. And maybe it's something we're going to do later in the series if many people will ask me. But for now we're going to create zombies that are going to patrol and if they see us and we're in range, they're going to chase us and attack us. And we're going to be able to use the different weapons to defend ourselves. So we're going to create a zombie script. So we're going to take the zombie script and we're going to drag it on our enemy. Inside we're going to add a few things. So inside this script, we have the HP of the zombie. We have the animator. In the start method, we get a reference to this component. And we also have the stake damage method that receives an integer of damage. Then it's going to reduce this damage from the HP. And if the HP is zero or less, it's going to trigger this die animation. And if it's not, it's just going to trigger this damage animation. Now we're not going to deal with these animations yet, but just know that this is something that is going to happen later. And for now, nothing is going to happen. Next, we want to add a zombie tag on our enemy in order to detect him. So over here, we're going to add a new tag and name it zombie. And then we're going to set it on the enemy. Now we want to be able to apply some damage to this enemy when we shoot at it. So we will open our bullet script. And over here we're going to add the damage that the bullet is going to inflict. And inside the collision enter we also need to detect a zombie. So we have these cases if we hit a wall, if we hit a beer bottle. And we want to add another case for hitting a zombie. So over here we add the zombie tag. And if it's a zombie we want to go into the zombie script and call the stake damage method. Now it wants to receive the damage. So we're going to take this bullet damage and pass it inside. And then we also want to destroy the bullet after it hits the zombie. 
Now, if we want to decide what will be the bullet damage, then we can set it in the inspector, but it means that all of our bullets will have the same damage. So it doesn't matter if we use a pistol or an M16, all the bullets will have the same damage, and that's not ideal. So we do want to decide what is the damage for each bullet. For this, we're going to open our weapon script, and at the top, we're going to add the weapon damage. And it means that for a pistol, you can set it to be something else. And for an M16, you can set it to be something different. Then we're going to scroll down to the fire weapon method. And over here, when we instantiate the bullet, before we actually add force to it, we're going to reach into the bullet script and we're going to set the damage. So the weapon damage is basically the bullet damage. Then we will go to our prefabs, we're going to select the pistol, and over here we have the weapon damage. So I'm going to set it to be 20, and it means that it will take 5 bullets to kill a zombie. And on the M16, because it has bigger bullets, we're going to set it to be 25, and it means that it will take 4 bullets to kill a zombie. Another thing that we need to do is add an animator component to the enemy, even though we don't have any animations, just so this part will not throw us an error. So we're going to add an animator. And because we don't have any animations, for now, when the zombie dies, we're simply going to destroy the game object. Let's also disable the click to move script because we don't want the enemy to move when we start shooting at it. So now we can pick up a weapon, for example this pistol, and we can shoot at the zombie and it will take us 5 bullets to kill it. So it works. And with the M16 we can also see on the zombie script that it goes down by 25 each time. So that's all I want to do in this episode. We created the enemy, we can now deal damage to the enemy, and it can also move on the nav mesh. Of course, we need to add animations, we also need to actually make it move to different areas depending on the state of the enemy, but we're going to deal with all of that in the next episodes. Thank you for watching, please subscribe if you're still not subscribed, it will help me a lot. Please leave a like, and I'll see you next time.